Howdy, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Phoenix Real Estate and Homes.com Whiteboard Monthly. And today, I thought we'd talk about advertising in the real estate industry, what works and what doesn't work, and how to avoid the expired list. See this? This is an expired list. This is a group of people who had elected to list their home with some real estate agent, and for one reason or another, the homes did not sell. Now, most people don't realize this, but about 30% of all homes listed in the Phoenix Metro market end up on a list like that. So homes that don't sell for one reason or another. So today we're gonna to look at some of the advertising that may not be used by some of those agents in order to help their clients get their homes sold. First thing I thought we would talk about is what it is that is commonly used by people who are searching for a home. So I've got a little list here of things that um, I thought would be good talking points. And the first one is the use of mobile. Now the National Association of Realtors has um, done a large study and they have figured out that last year that 89% of all people who are looking for a home at some point rely on their mobile phone to do that search wasn't so true five years ago, but now 89% of people looking are using their mobile phones. So we need to have, all of our content needs to be really mobile friendly. It doesn't pay to have a website that somebody has to you know, pinch on to expand or make smaller so that it fits their phone. All the content that we have online really needs to be super mobile friendly. Next, um, people will be using video to gain information about communities that they don't know about because they really are interested in finding out about what makes that community interesting beyond the home itself. So they want to see restaurants and uh, parks and schools and they want to get information about the area in general and you know your eye can learn a lot if you can just see some things so video does a really good job of, of highlighting those things. So they're relying on the videos in order to get that community information. Another thing people really care about are schools. So oftentimes what we'll find is people are, are doing research about what schools are good in a community. So they'll search according to a school that they have already heard or researched and found out is a good school. So school information is really important. If you have a good school in your area, um, that's something we definitely want to highlight in our advertising when we're working online to attract buyers to your home. Next thing is Facebook. Um, Facebook is the fifth largest search engine on, on the web. So um, a fifth, uh, it's a search engine a lot like Google. People will search topics on Facebook and so we don't want to leave Facebook out and we, we want to um, really cater to that and make sure that we're a you know posting content on Facebook about your home and boosting that content paying in order for people to be able to see it more frequently. Next thing uh, we already touched on areas and neighborhoods this is something that's really important to people. Outdoor activities um, a lot of people although they're living in the city they want to have access to trails and hiking and uh, fitness options that are appealing to them maybe running trails and parks, pools in the area. And another thing people are interested in are things like farmer's market, anything that creates a sense of community in the area that they live in. Because again, people really want more than just a house. And when they're searching for this community information, they're gonna be looking for things like farmer's market. So, you know, maybe having a little story on a local farmer's market and having a link from that to your house wouldn't be such a bad idea. Next, restaurants. Um, people definitely want good places to eat. They don't want to have to get in their car and drive five miles to get to something like that if they're thinking about a home in the Phoenix area. So that's really important. And workplace. They don't want to have to drive for 45 minutes to get to work. Now, sometimes people do it if it's just a matter of money they may end up buying a home way out on the outer ring of the of the metro and driving in but for the most part people buying homes in phoenix 
want to um, to do so partially because it's close to a workplace it's um, important for them next thing they'll do is start researching the intangibles like crime rates taxes affordability um, this all this information is easily accessible online taxes af affordability all of our uh, homes on our website have a little calculator that they can use to find out what monthly payment would be so they're going to look look into that they're going to want to know that they're close to friends and that the area has the kind of culture that they're excited about and then walkability they want to know that they're going to be able to walk to places that are of interest to them so those are some things that go into the proverbial hopper so to speak in order for someone to make a decision about whether or not to buy and so once they grab all this information then the the wheel really starts to turn and they're going to continue to research and get more information oftentimes <clears throat> and as time goes by actually a lot of time in most cases most people are looking for a period of time between 12 and 18 months before they actually uh, make a buying decision so they're uh, garnishing grabbing all this information they may end up sharing it with friends and family certainly with a spouse all the information that they're gaining and then at some point They'll feel affirmed and they'll take action and they'll buy the house that they're interested in. So how do we get all this information to the, the buyer so that they're interested in your home? And why do some homes, well actually most homes in Phoenix right now are taking an average of 70 days or more to sell. And many of them take a lot longer than that. That's just the average. Currently. Uh, my average seller is selling their home within 48 days, some a lot less than that, but very rarely does it go over this 48 days because we're trying to do a good job of, of leaning on these functions, making sure that people are getting the information that they need when it's time to make a buying decision. So now I thought I'd take a look at um, why homes are sometimes sitting around and uh, not finding a buyer they'll either end up on an expired list they might be they might cancel a listing you might notice that a listing has um, been with two three or even four agents for, before it finally sells um, they might be, become a for sale by owner thinking maybe they can do a better job of this themselves they might be so discouraged um, I've seen many homes you know two three hundred days on the market so we want to help you try to avoid that and now what I want to talk about is advertising that works and um, before we dig into this I thought it might make sense to just talk about what it costs to reach our buyer and what what particular methods are you know most uh, cost-effective so here on the top we have um, newspaper and so this is cost to reach a thousand people so with newspaper it costs around $32, $32 to reach a thousand people. Magazine is $20 to reach a thousand people. Radio, $8 to reach a thousand people. Cable TV, $7. Uh, Google AdWords, about $2.75. LinkedIn, or, or LinkedIn ads, about 75 cents to reach a thousand. And Facebook ads currently running about a quarter, uh, 25 cents to reach a thousand people. So you can see that the online um, methodology is much more cost effective and makes a lot more sense. So here I have a little diagram of some of the things that we use when we try to help uh, someone sell their home in 48 days or less. So <clears throat> this diagram kind of goes in, a, um, in, in this direction. It doesn't really have to. In fact, what often happens is, let's say somebody is um, looking at an, uh, a blog post that we wrote about your house that's for sale. So they get to the blog post and first let's back up for a second and, and ask, how did they find the blog post? Well, they probably started in a place like Google and typed in uh, community information or houses for sale in Phoenix or houses for sale in a specific neighborhood and ended up finding this post and 
there, on that post there might be a YouTube video that talks about that house, that talks about the neighborhood in the community. Now, they may, they may have found, found the house just by driving around and noticed a yard sign. They may have looked at all the photographs that we had taken, and they may have even shared what their findings with their friends on social media to get affirmation so that they can feel comfortable taking action. And they might even, t after all of this has happened, they may even go to their agent and say, hey, we found this house and we'd like to know more about it. Now, you would think that the person would just find the home just because the real estate agent sent the home to them and that's not always the case. Now there's so much freedom online to do our own research that buyers are consistently finding homes that their agents aren't sending them. They're finding them on their own and then they're using their agent to help them negotiate the transaction, go to see the house and take all the necessary steps, uh, inspection process, appraisal and all the like in order to complete their, their process. But they may be able to find that home on their own. So sometimes it's kind of hard to tell where all this got started, see? Um, it may just be that the person started from you know an ad on Facebook. They might have seen an ad on Facebook that we ran and then that linked off to our blog post. And from the blog post, they may have taken that and gone to their agent at that point. They may just go directly to their agent after that and tell them about the house and ask them to get more information. So this is kind of what we call pogo sticking. You know, you definitely don't know where all this started, but there, is, um, there are a number of us agents who use these tools to send out different bits and pieces of information in order to appeal to people. And one of the things that most real estate companies do is they use a syndication called uh, List Hub in order to get their information out on you know hundreds of websites so they um, enter their information into the MLS and the MLS extracts that information and sends it out onto tons of different websites like Zillow and Trulia and um, uh, Realtor.com and so on and so forth. Now all those findings that someone may see on Google as a result of that are all going to be a little bit generic in nature. They're kind of going to all look the same. So we really think that it pays to have unique advertising on these, uh, with, through these other sources in order to promote the house. For example, the community video might be on YouTube and we can have a link inside the uh, YouTube advertisement that links off to the blog post. So they may start by researching the community and finding a community video and then they see that link in our in our video and they link off to the blog post and find out more information. Our yard signs we will have uh, sign writers where they can send text, text, they can request texted information to them where we'll send them information on the property via text. So sometimes people will start with their yard sign and they will go from there over to the website where we've got the listing hosted on the website and then from there they may go and send that MLS or address over to their real estate agent. And how do I know this happens? Because it's happening to me all the time. I will, when I start working with a buyer, oftentimes it's because they have started either been referred to me and that one's easy to kind of figure out or they have, um, they have come into our wheelhouse through my website and signed up for the privilege to search on our website. Now, if, even if they've been referred to us, that person will often start searching on their own and finding homes in all kinds of places. They may, may be finding it online, um, having it through social sharing. They may see an advertise for a house on Facebook. They may say, see pictures on realtor.com. They might see a video about the house or about the community and come back to us and say, hey, what about this house at such and such an address? 
And it doesn't matter to me where they got the information. I instantly look it up and find out whether or not it's a home that is currently under contract or if we can go and see it. So this is how I know that people are not always following a straight line when it comes time to um, share information with me. And that's okay. Wherever they get the information when they're doing their online research is just fine with us. We just want to make sure that people are getting the right information. So um, you can see that these paying attention to what's happening online is critical in today's advertising. And having unique content on all these platforms is really important. So we don't want to just rely on the MLS to send out generic information to you know, hundreds of different websites that we know about like Zillow and Trulia. Those are all good. But we want to, as agents, create unique content so that people can find out unique information about a property. And we don't want to tell them everything either. We want to leave a little bit of information that is lacking in order for them to be interested. In other words, we want to sell the sizzle, not the steak. We don't want to show them everything in the videos and in, in the pictures we just want to give them enough information to where they want to go and see the house get inside of it and hopefully be interested so this is how we sell homes in 48 days or less if you're interested in finding out what your home is worth or if you're interested in just staying on top of that it's really easy to do. We can send a, set up a market report for your neighborhood so that every time uh, homes sell in your neighborhood, you're gonna get a monthly report showing all the homes that have sold in the, in the neighborhood, all the ones that are for sale, and it's gonna be way more accurate than something like Zillow, which relies on things like tax records in order to pull in that data. Our, our information is much more up-to-date and current, and you'll be getting you know, pretty much li a live feed to that information to the market report. So if you're interested in, um, in having that set up for you, just you know, reach out to me, give me a call on my cell, or email me and I'll be happy to help you with that. In the meantime, thanks for um, watching today's video about trends for uh, uh, advertising and marketing your home so that it will sell quickly and not end up on the good old expired list. Until next time, thank you.